All right, first up on the block is the motor wires. Now, when I was naming out the components, I forgot to mention motors. Uh, that's because I don't have any brand new motors for this build. I'm actually going to be using some uh, used bolts that I was using a while ago. Uh, just gonna go for an endurance build or a, an endurance rig that'll uh, get more flight time. So this is the one we're gonna use for this video. Uh, we take the TechFlex and all it does is simply slide up over and so this stuff expands when you when you press it into it see it getting bigger so that's one of the ways you can uh, get it on but I just slide it over the wires and then you see it getting expanding expanding to allow it through once it's on I straighten the wires back up I don't like the wires to be tangled up inside I'd rather them be sitting flat uh, you can braid them together, you can twist them together, but I like to keep them nice and flat, just, I don't know, I just like to do it. So, I take it about to there, to the edge, and then the heat shrink is going to go on them. Uh, for this side, you don't need as big of a piece of heat shrink as you do for the outer edge, and I'll tell you why in just one second. So the reason you don't need a bigger piece on the outer edge is because this this main the main purpose of the heat shrink is to keep the frayed ends on and you want to the and if your motor ever gets stripped off this is the part that's going to move the most right there and so if you don't have a big enough piece on and it's only barely covering the the ends it'll bend and it'll slide out and then it's just a messy build after that so if you have a longer piece right there i pull it down until then it's even, then I bring it just a little bit past it. Uh, again, I'm not doing this for looks. I know you're covering up a lot of the good looking tech flex by doing that. I'm doing it for max protection and build quality. So once it's on, you can have a heat gun and do the job, or you can be very, very careful with a lighter. And a lighter will do a great job of heat shrinking. The, be careful though, because the the uh, tech flex does melt if you're not careful with your lighter. Uh, I burn, I burn some of it all the time, but it's it's, a, it's cheap for how as much as you get. You get 25 foot roll of this stuff, so don't be afraid. This is some time you take some time to experiment and play around. Once it's on there, though, it will do a good job of keeping everything together, and you have a clean looking motor wire. Not too hard. I don't know why more people don't do this. Most people just tape their their uh, stuff down on their frames and call it a day. It just takes a little bit of extra work, uh, not much, and you have a higher chance of keeping your build alive longer, and it looks better. And before I forget, uh, the length of your motor wire, I usually cut it down to about 80, 85 centimeter or uh, millimeters to get started, and that's that's enough length to fit on the fastback, and then from there. Uh, I'll sometimes right before I'm soldering it on and I'm cleaning the edges up right here and, and tinning them I might shorten it directly to how long it's supposed to be by uh, but that'll happen once I have the four in one on there and I'll just I'll, I'll run it down all the way to the pad it's going to and if it's if it's extra long I'll, I'll cut it down and retin it and solder it on then but I do like to leave a little bit of slack um, I don't want to get to the point where I'm short on the leads and having to add wire onto it because then it just becomes messy and a pain in the ass. So keep that in mind, 80, 85 centimeter, or millimeters, um, and then you can get everything prepped. And then when you get to the point of soldering it on, you can do the final uh, cutting and measuring then. All right, with the motors done, the next thing I do is I get the four in one mounted to the board or to the frame. That way I can start soldering the motors up to it and uh, one of the first things you have to do is depending on if you follow the exact things I'm using you may have to uh, do a little modification to your nylon bolts so the way I mount this uh, these RMRC bobbins they're a little shallow when it comes to how far you can screw uh, something into them so you can't go very deep and uh, until you hit the stopping point and that causes a problem if you're trying to mount it directly down here because what it'll do is it'll hit the stopping point I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that but you'll you'll have a little gap uh, between the bottom of the carbon and the bobbin 
and that create that makes your stat go higher and that's not the only problem though that's not the main problem the main problem is this is in loose because you want this to come down snug on the carbon so I use nylon bolts on the bottom and I just modify them I just take a, some cutters or an exacto knife and the bottom plate is two millimeters and so what I do is I do about two millimeters and then I add about another two millimeters to it and you end up with a very small nylon bolt and, and the good thing is the smaller the bolt is uh, the stronger it's actually going to be less likely to break and there you go it's, it's nice and snug on there and that way it's not going to spin freely and it's not going to move up and down it's just nice and tight and as you see this bobbin right here let's see if you can, it moves so it's not going to be moving in flight. What it's going to be doing is going to be absorbing any vibrations. This is especially important uh, if you have something off balance like a, a bent prop or uh, a banged up uh, bell or bearing or something like that. It's going to be creating vibrations. Those vibrations go straight into carbon. Um, if you're not using soft mounts, it's, it's really bad creating the carbon and then it goes up into your stack, causes all sorts of issues with your gyro. And this way right here, uh, you're, you're minimizing a, as many vibrations as possible. You're isolating that flight controller as much as possible. Uh, we'll also be adding uh, soft mounts for the motors. Uh, I will at least. Whoops. Before I go any further, uh, there's a little frame preparation I usually do. I'm sorry. I usually do this before I even put the frame together. Uh, and if you're this far into the video and you're just now having to see this, my apologies. But anywhere you're going to have a strap at, uh, carbon comes usually in sharp edges and that's going to cause your battery strap to have a stress point right there that can just slice right through uh, in, a, in a hard crash your battery goes flying and you don't want that so what I do is I take a metal file uh, you can get these on Amazon for pretty cheap five six dollars for a full set different sizes I take a file though and I just shave off um, or round out the edges where anything is going to be sitting up against that carbon so uh, such as your your battery leads that go out the back here I round this area out and then uh, that's really it. mostly just the battery area um, where it'll be sitting up on that hard carbon I don't want the battery leads being sliced and wrecks or anything and then I, I round out the edges of the the carbon right here and so just do that till they're really smooth um, it's it's especially important on the inner pocket area you want to make sure that's there because that's where all the pressure is coming down when the battery's on here it's pulling the pressure so these two corners right here are the main ones but hit them all up and then you'll have uh, less likely it'll be less likely that when you crash you'll you'll snap the battery strap or cut up your lead once the bobbins are on, the 4-in-1 just slides right over right here. You're going to have the battery lead section going towards the front. That's where the room's at for that kind of uh, tab on a 4-in-1. And then you're going to take uh, something to secure, secure. I just want to use the, uh, the, the, the brass standoff. I'm going to use that to secure it down. That way it doesn't move anywhere. If you're using the bolt method where they provide the whole bolt, um, one of the reasons I don't like the bolt method uh, it goes all the way through is because it's uh, it's more of a pain in the butt to secure it down because what they provide in here doesn't actually secure it what it'll do is let's pull it out so you can see it they provide these little uh, standoffs that have to be screwed all the way down so you'll sit there and you'll have to screw it down all the way every time and take it off every time you want to get down to a different piece of equipment. If you need to get down to your foreign one, you have to take the top one off, take the flight controller off, and then take the middle one off. Um, I don't know. I just don't like it. It's uh, not as modular. This system right here, when you have each one uh, set with its own standoffs, it's more of a modular build. It's just preference, though. Uh, try your way. Try it. Try use what you have. If they give you this, try it. Build with that. Um, make your own assessment on that. Uh, but once that's on, I'm now going to put the motors on and bolt them down. And the way I do that is I take the uh, proper length. If you're using five millimeter um, arms, you're going to need an eight millimeter bolt that will go all the way through, uh, all the way through 
like that and leave you some thread for the motor to grip onto. Can you see that in the video? Boom. So you got some thread still there. And that should be enough thread to sit pretty close to fresh, a flush right there. All right, I'm gonna put these on and I'll get back with you. All right, I already have three of the motors on, as you can see right here. Um, these motors, uh, they, they mount a little weird, so they're coming out the side, the wires are, so they're bent a little bit. Uh, yours most likely will run right down the arm. Uh, most motors are standardized that way, but uh, these are a little more difficult. But I wanted to show you, for those of you first-time builders, um, how I go about the final measurements. So this one's actually a little bit longer for that purpose of the final measurement. Uh, all I do is I just grab some tweezers. You can do it with your fingers if you want, however you want to do it. Uh, I use tweezers a lot when dealing with wires just because I got fat fingers. And then I route the wire how it's going to sit. And because there's extra room in the pocket, I actually pull back just a little bit. Or what you can do is uh, you can just cut a little bit further past that. That way it'll have a little bit of slack and it's not going to be so tight. And then... I just cut it. That's one. So that wire's going there. And then that's not the right wire. And then you don't have to really worry so much about uh, your which wire goes on which pad because that can all be changed um, via software. Like depending on what pad, uh, how you wire the wire it to the pads, the motor will rotate a certain direction, and you, you switch two wires and it'll rotate the opposite direction. Um, for this purpose, I, I don't ever worry about the mechanical, um, mechanically changing it. I change it via software. Uh, it's just easier that way, so I don't have to stress the build. I can just get the build done and then get it all done during software, or during the software portion of the build. And then this final one will be about there. Once I have them cut to the right length, um, you, I just strip them. I have a little wire strip right here. Uh, there's many ways to strip them. You can do it with your fingers. Sometimes on these wires, they're soft enough that your, your fingernail will allow you to strip it just like that. Uh, I'm just gonna use this because that hurt my fingernail. And then once they're, they're stripped, I like to twist it in my hand in one direction I'll grab it with the other fingers and I twist it back with the first hand. It gives a little little twist. And so when I tend that, it'll be a stronger, um, stronger bond. And the wires, when soldering it to the board, won't flatten out. Uh, I used to actually keep them where they would flatten out because I thought it'd be a stronger connection, but it caused issues with um, pads if they're too close. When it flattened out, it would sometimes you know bridge the gap. Uh, and I don't like, you don't want to do that, that's bad. So, now that that is prepped uh, or cut, I go about tinning them, and all I do is I put a little, a little solder on the edge, just a little bit get going, and hold it to it for a second, and then you just drop solder on it. So, what this is, is called tinning your wires. It's the same thing as when you're tinning your pads uh, on, on the board, so on your boards, as you can see, they're already tinned. And all I did there was a little bit different than the wires. I'll hold it down for like a second or so, and then I'll start adding the solder around the solder tip. And then I start moving the solder a little bit around on a bigger pad. So like that one right there could have gone a little bit more, and it just moves it around. Uh, you add more solder to it if you need more solder. Uh, start with less solder than more. You don't want to have too much because then it becomes a big glob when you're adding everything else to it. Because you're gonna be adding solder to your wires too. That way when it comes to installing everything, you just have to touch a, a slightly wet tip. <laughs> so that sounds perfect. All right, so you have to uh, touch a slightly uh, soldered tip of your soldering iron to the wires and the pad and it all just kind of uh, melts together. So with that, I'll go ahead and do it. And you wanna make sure the wires are routed correctly, how they're gonna go. So on the fastback, the way the pod is, it has little motor holes, or motor wire holes on the side right there. On the back, it just goes straight into the back. So right here on the front, you wanna make sure to go in front of that bolt right there. 
are uh, behind that bullet, I'm sorry. And see all I'm doing? That was just a quick touch. That's an okay solder job. I actually wanted to, I needed to hold it down a little bit longer, the wire all the way down, because it hadn't set. So, melts in, hold the wire still for a second, and then it sets. All right, and as you get all the motor wires soldered on there, don't judge me. Uh, I'm doing this as fast as possible because I'm leaving out of town for a race uh, in a couple days and I gotta get everything done. I gotta get a lot done actually. So don't judge me on this, but <laughs> um, once that's done, I don't, uh, you can go ahead at this point and add the pigtails and your uh, cap, your capacitor.